Hey, what's up? Snell, welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be blasting the PILAU demo on Head Split Records. Now, the only song you will find digitally online is track number one, Ripping Through Metal. And what you get here is some killer, killer top shelf Hawaiian thrash slash speed. This is getting a cassette release, which I'm extremely stoked on, but this is my number one at the moment go to car release when it comes to a. Uh, Listening and here, thrash metal forged from the volcanic lava fields of Moa, Hawaii. I'm very curious also as to what P I L A U stands for because I can't really find too much information on. P-I-L-A-U, except for they're from Hawaii, and play ripping, speedy, thrash metal, straight out of 1986. It's fucking great. And I think that's awesome that, you know, Head Split went out of their way to add a little something that's normally reserved for vinyl. Thrash metal forged from the volcanic fields of Maui, Hawaii. That's fucking sick. So, yeah. Head split killing it with CD cosmetics. Wow. And this is HSR348. And... When it comes to a demo, this is all you need. Just the old-fashioned single cover. That's what I always called these, like the promo slash single slash. Sometimes you would get like one of those late, like those label compilations in these type of uh, like CD slip cases. Which again, if you are a new band. And you're looking to save a couple bucks. I'm not sure what's more expensive, but like jewel cases can be, uh, you know, a little, especially if you do inter international shipping, you'll notice a lot of international labels will ship your stuff like this. Like, I, I don't. E I honestly don't even know what this is. I won like some contest, and they sent this over. I'm guessing it's some sort of brutal death metal. Although the cover kind of suggests otherwise, I don't really know. But uh, yeah, you know, like sometimes you'll order an official release, like um, the European pharmacist CDs from uh, Bazaar Leprous Productions. Um, like, we had to build these ourselves and stuff, and, uh, you know, luckily we had our own jewel cases at the time and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's always a good route to go, like, especially if you're doing international shipping, because this cuts down on the weight massively and then there's this option but i have a tiny complaint about these types of digi packs do not leave them in a car like these are not very car friendly it's definitely a bummer when something you know is, like, impossible to get another copy of gets cosmetically trashed. And from the car, this is why I don't really like car, 
car stereos. See all those scratches? That's from sliding in and out of the car. These things happen, though. But it's one of the reasons I, like, honestly, after my last collection, I kind of stopped fucking with CDs. But since I've been using the car so much lately, like, trust me, this Immortal Suffering also gets tons of plays. Horns and Hooves is in the car, as always. Same with, uh, Scum Slot. I mean, uh, I, not, I didn't mean to say Scum Slot. I meant, um, yeah, Scum Slot. Uh, my bad. I was, for some reason, I was thinking Slaughter Cult, but that's an Exhumed record. But, um, another great option is the, you know, again, if you're trying to save some money here with international shipping, these types of digipacks are great. They're also great for some cool cosmetic stuff like that. But these do ding up and bend and you know, whatnot, very easily, again, if you listen to your CDs in the car a lot, I suggest getting a CD book, and I know I've said before, fuck CD books, like, because I had that 500 plus one get stolen, and I was just left with 500 empty cases, like, I mean, around 500 empty cases. Some of them were CDRs, and I learned, you know. And I kind of learned this really weird way. Like, I would buy, like, a CD and then rip it onto the computer, burn a copy of the CD, and if I got the CD from Best Buy, and it wasn't something that I was really super impressed with, I would bring it back and say, this doesn't play on my car stereo, and would get either my money back, or, uh, what was it, store credit. Kind of grimy, yeah, but it was fucking Best Buy, I didn't care, but, uh, yeah, when it came to, like, you know, brick-and-mortar record stores, completely different. Like, you never should take advantage of your local brick-and-mortar record store. But it's fucking Best Buy. Yeah, fuck. Yeah. I'm sorry. You ruined Radio Shack back in the day. So, we got beef. hooty hoo And, uh, what's it called, too? Um... What's that fucking place? Because uh, Circuit City shut down as well. And I always pointed my finger at Best Buy. But now Best Buy is on, like, the chopping block. But anyways, you're not going to find this at a brick-and-mortar record store unless it's in the Portland area, I'm guessing. And... It's a pretty badass record store, because if they're carrying any head split releases, chances are they know the underground, and yeah, they probably have some killer stuff, but when it comes to the P-I-L-A-U demo, just top shelf speed slash thrash metal, I can't get over how good this is. It sounds like early Sodom meets, like, DRI. Yeah, like, hazardous mutation error municipal waste meets toxic holocaust evil never dies error. Because then you kind of get that early Sodom vibe mixed with the catchy riffing of hazardous mutation but i really love this track ripping through metal it opens this bad boy up 
Sorry, I don't have a working CD player in the house, but I'm using, you know, the, the MacBook's still here, so I'm using the MacBook. But you get four tracks on this demo, and like I said, it is getting a cassette release. As it, like, this sounds great on CD, but I can't wait to hear this on cassette. Just to hear it through a rumbly speaker, I just know it's going to be even more fun to listen to. But great promo photo. And, you know, the scene in Hawaii is pretty gnarly. Like, I love their black metal scene. I love their death metal scene. And now I'm a big fan of their thrash metal scene. Because they are ripping through metal, but also ripping through time. And then that goes into Warzone. My favorite track on here, though, besides ripping through metals, probably Into the Night. But Time for War that closes everything off is just a total thrasher, like... Just banger. I wish I could still headbang because it's just. You can feel your hair grow with the riffs, the vocals. This is thrash metal for fans of thrash metal that also love their speed. And it's great. Like, I love the bass tone. Everything about this is classic as it gets. And it's just done extremely well. It's a great demo. And it's a perfect head split release. Because when it comes to head split and their non-death metal releases, this is right up their alley. And it's just a total banger. It's catchy. It, it's seriously, this is so good. Get into it. Four tracks of Hawaiian thrash sets. <laughs> thrash slash speed metal. P I L A U. From Hawaii, Maui, Hawaii, at that. Thank you to Dylan at Head Split and Kobe for making the order to begin with. Because without that motor cassette, this demo would not have been sent. So thank you to Disguster666 and thank you to Kobe. Because we get to go over the P-I-L-A-U demo. Ripping through metal. I don't know if that's the demo's name, but I'm just going to call it Ripping Through Metal. But I think it's just the P-I-L-A-U demo. And uh, it's just super good. Definitely get into it. And if you don't enjoy it, I don't know what to tell you. But there's only one song posted digitally, so this is kind of a blind buy. Not really, you know exactly what to expect when you hear Ripping Through Metal. But trust me on this, if you're a fan of thrash metal, just get this. Like, how many thrash demos, like, have you honestly, have you ladies and gentlemen gone out of your way to listen to in 2022. I'm talking modern thrash slash speed metal. Like, which bands have put out, like, a demo where you were, like, you went out of your way to check it out? And I'm not talking death thrash. I'm not talking, I'm talking straight up, like, speedy thrash metal. Because, like, I don't know. I was just thinking, like, I really... I, I know I mentioned it yesterday. I really need to start getting back the Toxic Holocaust discography. 
back into my life. Including the yellow goat stuff. Like, I, I really want the yellow goat session. But first, I need to get a vinyl copy of Toxic Holocaust Evil Never Dies. I love that record. And I was reminded of it in a photo that was taken of me from, I think it was 2011, maybe 2010. And uh, I'm wearing a shirt from, uh, like, when they were touring for Evil Never Dies. And Joel got, like, a lineup together and everything. And that was a sick fucking show. Like, the first, like, non-basement Philly Toxic Holocaust show. It was at the First Unitarian. Like, it was sick. It was a great fucking show. But, yeah. It, this release right here just got me, like, you know, thinking about some of the uh, thrash metal I really used to be into. Like, obviously, early destruction, early Sodom, your usual suspects. But um, also, like, there was a little time period where, like, when destruction did their last American tour... Like, full tour, we helped them load into the First Unitarian. And those guys were a bunch of assholes. Like, rock star assholes. They had a 16-passenger tour bus. It might have even been, I think it was just a tour bus. I don't know how many people they fit. But if you've ever been to the First Unitarian, there's no room for a tour bus. So they park this tour bus on the actual sidewalk out front of the church. And we just helped, you know, load in their equipment and got in the show for free. It was good. It was fucking sick. But those guys were, yeah, they were definitely on some rock star shit. I, I wasn't, like, I was kind of like, vibed out by it i was just like man like we're kind of doing you guys a favor here like you don't need to be dicks like and like i know a little bit of like german too so like you know i kind of purposely and like i was like drinking at the time so like i was kind of like ah scheitza and shit like and i like, call my friend like a dumb cough and I, I think they thought I was being just like an asshole, it's whatever. But hey, we got in the show for free, so that was cool. And uh, yeah, we got to meet the Destruction guys, although that was kind of a bummer. But when I met the dudes from Exodus, that was pretty cool. Because those guys were super fucking nice. And it was after King Diamond's uh, Abigail reunion and stuff. Uh, not reunion, Abigail anniversary tour and shit. And uh, I just remember seeing the Exodus dudes when I was leaving the show. And I was like, yo, can I get my picture? And uh, I have a picture somewhere. But uh, yeah. If you want to be ripping through metal, go check out P-I-L-A-U on Head Split Records. This demo is one of the best releases of the year so far. <laughs> Like, it's that good. It's so fun to listen to. Like, especially if you have the new horns and hooves. Like, throw on the new horns and hooves, then get Caligari's Scum Slot, and finish it up with some P-I-L-A-U, and you have yourself a filthy set of tunes to listen to. And, yeah, I have my Scum Slot CD in the car, and I have my Horns and Hooves CD in the car. So, that's the thing, like, when I'm driving, I like listening to sleazy, you know, tunes. But, I wouldn't throw P-I-L-A-U under the sleazy, you know, banter. Sleazy Banner, I would throw this under the fucking awesome banner, but still, it just kind of has that vibe to it, like, that classic 
astounding. The like I said, that describes everything about this release. P I L A U are totally ripping through metal on their demo. Four tracks of speedy thrashing goodness. Thank you again to Kobe and Disguster at Head Split Records. You fucking rule and you rule for watching. Hails. Yeah.